The Northwest is the capital of alternative strip cartoons, or comics for grown-ups who like their comics grown up. Matt Groening, the creator of The Simpsons, is Seattle born and bred. But there are many more where he came from. Bill Judkins went to Fantagraphics looking for the new Bart. This former Seattle roller disco is now the warehouse for Fantagraphic Comics, the country's largest producer of alternative comic magazines and titles. This place is full of thousands and thousands of comic books. What we're trying to do is to publish comics that have some literary or artistic merit. Oddly enough, we're, we're in sort of a renaissance in comic art today, but paradoxically, uh, more and more people are buying comics for, for purely speculative reasons than they are for the actual reading experience. And we publish comics essentially for that reading experience. I'd right? say we publish a couple of dozen books a year and probably about uh, 200 to 250 individual comics, whether in series or one shots. This is Love and Rockets, the comic for mature readers created by the Hernandez brothers. Some say it was Fantagraphics' first big success. It was one of the first titles that Fantagraphics published on a regular basis prior to the popularity of uh, titles like Hate and Eight Ball. Um, and I think paved the way for a whole group of new underground cartoonists with socially relevant themes. It accurately reflects um, American society uh, in its cultural diversity. Buddy Bradley, a character in a comic book called Hate, speaks for an entire generation of American malcontents. Well, Hate Comics uh, mainly revolves around a character named Buddy Bradley. He has a negative slant on everything, and just uh, and for that reason, is very reluctant to commit himself to anything. A character like Buddy and people who identify with him, uh, what they love is pretty much defined by what they hate and vice versa. Real Stuff, written by Dennis Eichhorn, is a prime example of the new trend of autobiographical comics. They are all basically true stories, and each issue generally has stories that deal with sex, drugs, violence, and or pathos or humor. But these are the hottest titles of all. So hot, in fact, that maybe they should be printed on asbestos paper. Well, we expanded to the erotic comics line uh, essentially out of desperation. Uh, we were financially uh, very deep in the hole, and uh, we were looking for a way to make some quick and easy money. In less than two years, the Eros comic line has turned around the fortunes of the company. Some popular titles include Birdland, Butterscotch, and the seminal Wendy Whitebread, Undercover Slut. Anton Dreck Comics, um do push the limit. I mean, uh, that uh, virtually every sex act, I, I, I think uh, an upcoming issue, he's, he's promising bestiality. I, I, it's a werewolf uh, story. If the comic book gives me a hard-on, then I know it's probably going to do the same for thousands of readers all over the world. These porno comics might be fine for the boys, but what about the girls? Roberta Gregory is the creator of Naughty Bits, a sexplicit but non-erotic adult comic sprinkled with feminist fury. I think like a lot of the Eros comics, I mean, um, it's basically the, the same tired fantasies about women. And um, I know some of the art, like especially like the Anton Dreck art, really seems to reflect a lot of hostility towards women. This is bitchy bitch, I mean, showing her sexual fantasies, which are not ladylike, you know, cute um, tampon commercial fa fantasies. They're, you know, pretty brutal, pretty vile, just like a lot of women's fantasies. And she's pretty realistic. She sort of takes the frosting off of um, cartoon women. To I promised Lori Pike I'd find her a copy of Love and Rockets number three, and I, I know it's here somewhere, but I've only got 2,000 more boxes to go.